الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد النبي الأمي وآله وصحبه أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته and welcome to a new episode of Light upon Light Today inshallah we are going to study few verses from Surah Yasin chapter 36 Surah Al-Saffat chapter 37 Start with Surah Yasin Yasin we refer to two letters in the Arabic alphabet Ya and Sin let me mention the excellence of Surah Yaseen. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Everything has a heart. And the heart of the Quran is Surah Yaseen. He also said, Whoever reads Yaseen, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala gives him a reward equivalent to reading the Quran ten times. This doesn't mean I will only read Yaseen and then I will ignore the rest of the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he said about Laylatul Qadr, Khayrun min al Shah, the night of Al Qadr, the night of the power, the night when the revelation of the Quran started, is better than 1,000 months. It doesn't mean I only pray during that night and then I don't pray for the rest of my life because 1,000 months is about 80 years. No, it shows the importance and the excellence of Laylatul Qadr and the importance and the excellence of Surah Yaseen. Why? Because in another hadith, the Prophet Sallallahu said, whoever reads Yaseen at night before he goes to bed, Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala will forgive all his sins. So when he wakes up in the morning, he is pure, no sins. Also the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam recommended that you read it for the dead as well. He said, اقرأوها على موتاكم. He also wished if Yasin was in the heart of every person of his ummah. So why shouldn't we make an effort to read Yasin every night before we go to bed and hopefully, inshallah, eventually the teachings of the surah will be in the hearts of every Muslim and then his Deeds will reflect what is in his heart. In Surah Yaseen, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us a very interesting parable or example about a village where the people were so bad. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent them two messengers. He sent to them two messengers. So the people denied the message and they claimed that these messengers are but human beings like themselves. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent a third one in support of the first two. So now we have three messengers. So the people of the village insisted on their crimes and they said, you are liars. The most gracious did not send anybody. Why would he send human beings like ourselves? If he would have wealth, you could have sent an angel, as the other said. They said, we are messengers from your Lord and our duty is to deliver a clear message to you. So the evil people of the village said, ah, you know, you brought bad evil on us, bad omen. Since you came and look, we are having hurricanes and tornadoes and earthquakes and volcanoes, we are losing our business, we are losing our wives, we are losing our children. You brought bad luck. And if you don't stop coming to instruct us and admonish us, we are going to stone you to death and we are going to punish you severely. So the messengers answered back by saying, the, a pro the problem is with you, with yourselves, nothing to do with us. The bad omen or the evil omen comes from you, from the bad deeds, from what you are doing. The more evil you do, the more punishment Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will send on you. Then a man came running all the way from the city. They were in the village, al qarya and then from Aqsa al-Madina, from the farthest end of the city, a man came running to the village. He said, come on. What is wrong with you? He was now 
a person like them. He did not claim he was a messenger. Why don't you follow the messengers? They are not asking you a reward or uh, a, a gift or to pay them. Why should not I worship the one who created me and to whom you shall return? So he started to define God to them. It is not befitting to associate any gods with him because if the most gracious wants to harm me in any form, they will not be able to defend me. They will not be able to protect me. And their intercession has no meaning as far as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is concerned. They will not be able to save me from the punishment of Allah. If I would have done that, surely I'll be misguided. I'll be following the wrong path. For me, I have faith in the Lord of you all. So listen to me. You know what they did to him? They killed him. He ended his conversation by saying, Fasma'oon. So they killed him. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala immediately admitted him to paradise. So he said, Ya layta qawmi ya'lamoon bima ghafara li rabbi wa ja'alani min al I wish if my people would know what happened to me, what reward I have received. And the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has forgiven all my sins and he made me one of the honored people. So what was the response of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to their crime, to killing this man and to defying the messenger, the three messengers who came to them? Do you think Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will send soldiers from heaven on them to fight them? No, Allah doesn't need this. وَمَا أَنزَلْنَا عَلَىٰ قَوْمِهِ مِنْ بَعْدِهِ مِنْ جُنْدٍ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ وَمَا كُنَّا مُنْزِلِينَ We did not send down against his people after him any hosts from heaven, any soldiers, any armies, any troops, nor was it needful for us to do so. إِنْ كَانَتْ إِلَّا صَيْحَةً وَاحِدَةً فَإِذَا هُمْ خَامِدُونَ it was no more than a single mighty blast, an earthquake or a hurricane or a tornado or a great and violent wind. So what happened to them? They were like ashes, quenched and silent. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues to say, Ah, alas, for my servants. There comes not a messenger to them, but they mock him. Every time he sends a messenger to a community, they make fun of him all the time because he wants them to change their evil. This is, this is the problem. And to them, this evil became part of the norm, the daily norm, so that to them, they don't see it as wrong to, to deceive people, to cheat people, to be unfair, to bribe people, to corrupt people, to them, this is the norm. Unfortunately, many communities are becoming like that. The corruption became the norm. The bribe became part of the daily activities. If you don't bribe someone, you will not be able to get anything done. And unfortunately, the majority of these people, when they start to practice these things, they are fully convinced that they are on the right path. When someone goes to them to enjoin what is right and forbid what is wrong, to say, look, this is the book of Allah. What you are doing is unlawful. You shouldn't do that. Allah will destroy you. They make fun of him. They ridicule him. They mock him. Exactly in the same way these people did with their messengers. So please beware that this will happen to us if we continue to reject the teachings of the Quran and what Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam brought and practiced. Thank you for being with me. Please join me after the short break. <laughs>